Hi, folks! Welcome to Admiral's Academia. I'm Admiral Ann Cash. Most folks just call me Admiral. Uh, a couple of housekeeping things real quick. Uh, can you see and hear me okay? If you are here, please say so in chat. Waiting for a check to make sure we are good, and then we will continue. Okay, we got the green light. We're good to go. Awesome. Okay, um, other housekeeping things. Uh, please remember that this uh, is a scheduled event for the Kingdom of the Nine Blades, so if you have access to our Discord, please feel free to sign in for a credit for this. Okay, sounds good. All right, then let's get right into it. Today's class is preparing to return to in-person Ampedgard. Now, for those that have attended my classes before, it will be the same structure, so we're going to go a... Sorry, my cat Trey here. <laughs> what is one of these classes without Trey just randomly popping up? Apologies. <laughs> okay, so again, uh, if you are here for the first time, how we structure these classes is uh, what, what, uh, who, when, where, why, and how. Uh, so that way you're going to be able to know the structure of the class, what's coming up next, uh, how close we are to the end, and at the end of the how section, we'll open it up for Q&A if you have any questions. Um, other than that, please feel free to post questions throughout uh, the class on either the Nine Blades Discord in the uh, event section or uh, right here on our Twitch stream on chat. Okay, looks good. I think other than that, we're good to start. So let's go. And suddenly, we have our first technical error. Okay, we're good to go. Apologies for the delay. Okay, okay. Let's restart this. Okay, so here we go. Uh, the class, again, is preparing to return to in-person Ampgard. So we, are, we will start with the what. What is this? Um, returning to in-person field after Board of Directors approval. Uh, particularly in the Kingdom of the Nine Blades, before you are allowed to start field again, your park officers have to present a bid to the Board of Directors. Only then can your field reopen. So I will go into that a bit further in the how section, um, but we will be referencing that and reminding that as we go through this class. Okay, so once you do have your bid approval from the Board of Directors, uh, it will be uh, dependent on what types of activities you can do. So obviously there's going to be sort of two sets of things um, that your field will particularly be able to do or not do. So uh, for one thing, uh, depending, again, this is going to be dependent on um, what your officers feel uh, are, com are comfortable with uh, the particular circumstances, depending on the numbers uh, in your city, and whether or not uh, they feel that they can uh, keep the environment safe for their players and be able to uh, go along with all of the PPE regulations and all of the safety checks in place. Uh, so there are some parks that are opening that are doing non-combat activities. So uh, if you are in one of those parks, some suggestions that uh, you can do for those fields are ANS, uh, other classes like lectures like this right here, um, drills, uh, target archery, open RP, and non-contact quests. Now, if you are so fortunate to be in a city that is doing quite well with officers that feel that uh, they can handle uh, the safety regulations with combat and that it is approved by the board of directors, then you can have uh, combat, but most likely with safety uh, restrictions in place. Uh, so some things to consider with combat. PPE is going to be very important. Um, wearing masks, uh, making sure that you are using hand sanitizer, that you are sanitizing weapons um, between games and before games um, and after games. So, uh, and again, this will be dependent on your bid and uh, what is listed in the bid for um, how your officers will regulate things. And again, 
if the board of directors approves them. Um, modified games. So you might be able to do combat, but you may not be able to do things like touch spells. So some things that you can do is uh, simply just change uh, co uh, contact spells to two meters, or if you're in the States, six feet. There are other modifications that you can do, but it's still possible to play the games with just making slight um, augmentations to be able to do so at a safe range um, and to not uh, go against any local bylaws in place. Okay, we're good with that. So we can move on to the next section. Again, if anyone has any questions at any point, please feel free to message in either chat, either the, uh, <laughs> there we go, uh, the Nine Blades scheduled event on our Discord or here on Twitch in our text chat. Uh, if you ever need me to repeat, rephrase something at any point, let me know. And again, uh, I will check after every slide to check in and make sure we are all good and ready to move on. Okay, so who? Who will be involved with this undertaking? Obviously, the first and foremost is the board of directors. Uh, the board of directors are here to make sure that uh, the kingdom isn't going to suffer from any liability issues. Uh, they are the ones that deal with the mundane um, legal side of things um, for us also dealing with our non-for-profit organization. Uh, and they will be the ones assessing the bids and they are the ones that made the regulations of um, what is required for those bids. Uh, if you are interested in um, those regulations, if you go to uh, the Facebook group, um, Kingdom of the Nine Blades, it is in our announcement section. Okay, uh, players. Obviously. Um, so, things to consider with players. Uh, this will obviously be you in this case, uh, but this will also be your park mates. Now, some will, uh, some bids may require there to be a limited number of players. Uh, it might also restrict uh, whether or not you can have travelers uh, from outside of your park come in. Uh, it might also have regulations on players that don't live in your city that are members of your park. Uh, for us in the Nine Blades and um, dependent again on your park's proposal, uh, you might need to have a specific bid uh, per individual who is coming to field that is outside of the city, but is strictly a member of that park. Um, so they basically would need to explain um, why they feel that they are safe to do so. Uh, and that would be then the decision of the monarchy to decide whether or not they feel that those are uh, valid and that it can be done safely. Um, also with players, um, another thing is you may not be able to have uh, new players come in. Uh, so that also is a thing to consider. And as we move from phase to phase, the number also um, may be getting larger. Um, also things to consider if you are an officer and uh, you do have a restricted amount that you are allowed to have in your standard size of your park is more than that number um you should also you should consider at that point uh how uh to make it a fair process for uh folks to be able to attend those um Right, I, I've heard of some parks doing lotteries. I've heard of some parks doing um, a sign up, first come, first serve, um, doing so all like ahead of time, so they so they don't you know travel all the way there and go, oh, you didn't make it. Uh, you're here's the cutoff, and you're not on it. So okay, thanks for coming, getting all garbed up and geared up, and you got all your gear, and you traveled you know an hour to get to field. Whoops, sorry. Right. Um, more or less, that's not the best approach to go with, uh, in, in my personal belief, um, to each their own, of course. Um, these are one of those things, as an officer, uh, that's your decision to make. Um, but it's always good to, to find out other options and, and try to do so uh, in a fair uh, manner. Okay, officers. Officers are going to be super, super important in this. Um, 
they are going to be the ones that are creating the bid uh, to the board of directors. They have to decide what they feel is going to be safe for their players. Um, they need to be able to decide if, um, if they can handle the amount of players that are allowed to be there. Um, imagine, if you will, if you have a hundred people on a field um, and only one safety officer available, um, the likelihood of them being able to make sure that everyone is staying distance, everyone is keeping their mask on at all times, uh, making sure that everyone's using hand sanitizer, sanitizing their weapons, um, all the things that, you know, they'd be having to do, having a hundred people and one person only to be able to, to manage that, that's probably not going to be the safest scenario. So those are things to consider. Um, the officers are also going to be the safety officers. So they're going to be the ones that are going to have to sign in folks because uh, as of right now, uh, we don't have folks grabbing pens that are mutually spread around and signing in themselves. Um, a lot of the ways that it's happening right now is uh, the, the chancellor or designated safety officer uh, will verbally do your sign in with you. Um, at that point also, they will do um, the, the health safety check. So uh, they'll go through the list of symptoms thing, making sure uh, you haven't traveled outside of the country in the last 14 days, haven't been around anyone uh, suspected of COVID or has positive COVID, making sure that you are not positive for COVID and haven't been for the past 14 days, so on and so forth, uh, temperature tons of symptoms. Um, there's a lot on their list, um, but they will go through that whole entire list with you. So that's another thing that the officers are going to have to handle. Um, making sure that uh, they are actually telling people, uh, reminding them when people are getting too close to each other. Um, making sure that people are not sharing weapons, sharing gear, um, all sorts of the things according to the bid. So these are going to be the individuals that will perform all the duties listed in the bid and make sure that uh, everything is staying as safe as, as humanly possible. Uh, now, these might be just your, your park officers, uh, but they might also delegate specific individuals to be safety officers uh, to assist them with the workload and to make sure that uh, there are enough eyes and ears everywhere um, able to assist in... Um, making sure fields are running, uh, running smoothly and safely. Okay, uh, next up is going to be the local health unit. Uh, so this will be dependent on your city. Uh, this will be dependent on um, what phase you're in, um, what they classify AmpGuard under, and what the specific uh, rules are for that classification. Right. Um, if AmpGuard in your area is considered like a sports league, then there'll be a list of things that sports league will be able to do and not be able to do, and how many um, of those individuals can gather at um, one location at the same time. Um, so a part of all of our bids up here uh, do also uh, require the officers to get in contact with the local health unit uh, to make sure that uh, they are making the assessment of what AmpGuard is and letting them know if there's any specific things um, in their safety plan and um, their bid in general to make sure that uh, it complies with uh, the local uh, safety regulations for the city. Okay, uh, doop, doop, doop. mundanes. Okay. Basically all of our parks uh, are, are parks. They're just regular parks that any old person at any old time uh, could be going through. So um, when you go to field, you may not be the only person at the field. So it's going to be important that you stay away from the mundane individuals because they will also not be going by uh, the same safety regulations. Uh, 
if you have gone outside at any point in this pandemic and seeing all the people not wearing masks and touching things and touching their face and doing all sorts of super cringy things that are very unsafe during this time um those people could be in your park just walking around uh maybe come up to you um without a mask getting too close to you all that super uncomfortable terribleness um that's going to be things that you're going to want to be aware of and have a plan for and again safety officers make sure that your players are going to be safe from mundane individuals that might do that especially if they're interested in what you're doing hey what's this what's all of that going hey hey this is a cool thing do you hit each other with these right We've seen that happen many, many a time uh, before the pandemic of just random mundane people coming up, grabbing your gear, asking questions, getting one foot away from your face to go, hey, that looks pretty cool. Um, be prepared. <laughs> um, right. Obviously, we we like to have uh, interactions with our, our populace, um, with our community, and um, to bring in new players and... And that's always a great thing. Um, but we have to be very, very careful during this time. Uh, and we also need to make sure that uh, folks are being safe. And also, especially if we are not allowed to have new players, right? You can give them um, give them information about um, where to go, like, like Facebook or Discord, something like that, uh, whatever your park's main form of communication is, and let them know according to our you know our current rules we're not allowed to have new players but hey soon we'll most likely be able to so we'd love to have you back out have it you try it at that point um if you go to this website right um we'll be able to stay in contact with you and let you know when that'll be okay um park officials and or police so um you're gonna be in the park a lot of times, especially officers, will be dealing with uh, park officials and police specifically. Um, they might come over and check in. They might want to to see if you're actually um, following uh, the safety regulations of, of your city. Um, right again make sure that your your um, your officers are are ready for that interaction. Um, make sure that you, you have your safety plan, um, be able to safely and easily explain to them, um, that you've talked with the health unit, that you, um, have had your safety plan approved and that, um, that you are complying with all of these safety regulations for the classification of your group. But again... Random individuals you may or may not have to deal with at any point during this. So, just good things to keep in mind. Okay, looks like we're still good. Again, if anyone has any questions at any point, feel free to post them. And again, we'll go into that Q&A um, as soon as we get done with the house section. But we are at when. Okay, when? Uh, when is, again, when preparing to return to field. Uh, this is going to be the day and time that your park normally would meet prior to the pandemic. Um, note, <laughs> uh, you're going to want to check with your local park officers uh, beforehand to see if uh, the board of directors has approved multiple field days. Uh, your bid may only have one field day on there. Um, it may not say anything about um, allowing uh, fighter practices or ANS nights or secondary field days or um, even outposts, things like that. So what you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to want to check the bid and you're going to want to check in with your, uh, with your local officers and see uh, what is being allowed. And um, also if you may be just starting with a single field day and it might be part of your um your bid that 
in certain like in phase three or something like that that you would open up to more than one field day um it might even be a case where uh that's the intention and it's not a part of your bid and the intention is to submit another bid when you go farther down the line and go okay we're in a good situation we're handling the field safety really well we have the officers and we have the players and we're ready to do a second field um, now we'll submit another bid particularly to do those two things right so it may be absent from the uh, first initial bid because the intention is to do a secondary bid um, so just note that that's a thing um, also just sort of like a heads up um, if you are making changes you have to check in with the BOD they might require you to again submit another bid um, but do not assume that you are allowed to just do anything and make any old changes you like after that first bid if it's not written specifically in it and isn't approved at that point uh, the last thing you want is is for uh, for you to go in and go hey so we want to field on this one day uh, no combat and then the BOD finds out later that you're doing three field days and you've been doing combat all along really really bad <laughs> so that is super unsafe uh, that is a huge liability issue um, avoid okay uh, again if there are any questions at any point feel free to ask and we will just keep trucking along where okay again just just like the win this is going to be the regular uh park location meeting um now there's it's going to vary a little bit um because uh, you might have some indoor meeting things you might have some outdoor e meeting things um it is likely that only outdoor will be allowed at this point um again you're going to want to note such a thing in your bid uh, you're going to want to check again um, with the local health unit uh, so that they know if you have any intention of doing an indoor field um, or ANS night or, or whatever that uh, indoor thing might be. Um, you're also going to want to uh, make sure that the indoor location that you are planning to go to uh, is currently allowing indoor use. Uh, and any safety regulations um, or safety plan that they require for you to be in that space. Um, and again, sharing with them what your safety plan is uh, so that they know that you're going in there um, with good intention and with uh, safety in mind and everything uh, pre-set out and planned. Um, it might also be a thing where uh, it might be a later bid thing where down the line when we are in uh, later phases that indoor locations be added to a secondary bid. Okay. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple stuff so far. Um, we will just keep trucking along. Okay. Why? Why? Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Um, we want to return to in-person field as pandemic restrictions ease. Um, the biggest note I have to say on this is that the pandemic is not over yet. Safety is still going to be paramount in our reopening. Um, just because we are able to be outside and we are able to play in some capacity, um, the safety regulations are going to be absolutely essential. We do not want to risk anyone's health in our hope to regain what sense of normalcy uh we once had um this game is a live action role play as, as wonderful as this time online has been and um i know a lot of our hopes is that there'll still be online content and there still be a place for us to engage online now that we know that that's um a tool for us to be able to use um at the heart of it Amp guard is an in-person activity and uh, being able to uh, return to that is going to be very important. Uh, so 
that's the big, 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 big part of us opening. Um, but we have to do so safely. We need to do it in the phases that are appropriate in the types of things, whether that be um, not doing combat to begin with, um, or doing so with heavy restrictions and safety guidelines in place. Um, we, we want to get back, but we don't need to rush it and we need to do it safely because that's, that's what matters most. It matters most that we are safe. Okay. Again, I be self-explanatory. So let's get into the, the big meaty part of this. So um, I will go over how for players and then I'll go for, over how for officers. So we're going to start with players. Um, there's going to be two sections that are going to be like the main points of this. And one is mental preparation and one is physical preparation. So we're going to start with mental. Um, some things to consider. Introverts versus extroverts. For introverts, this might be an uncomfortable time returning to field. They might prefer being online. They might prefer having lots of text-based things or having a voice chat thing where they can leave quickly or mute or um, deafen their earphones, right? Um, earphones, headphones. Um, at any point where they can choose to go and, and, and come um, at the drop of a hat when you're in person, it's not easy to just go and leave quickly. Um, it could be awkward being around people again. Um, it might also be difficult to deal with a mass of people. Um, also considering um, the anxieties that are in place also with, um, there's, there's, there's lots of fear. There's lots of fear with this um, because again, the pandemic isn't over and there's still going to be safety things that are going to be weird interactions where, you know, again, y your face is mostly covered, having a conversation where you can't see um, all of somebody's facial expressions is, is an uncomfortable experience. Um, talking to them at a specific distance um, can be an uncomfortable experience. Um, so, if you are introverted, have these things in mind. Go in um, with just the knowledge that it's not going to be the same experience that you've been going through online. Um, consider what is comfortable for you. Um, consider, um, <laughs> as weird as this might sound, um, exit strategies. Um, you might have a situation where... Um, you go and there's tons of people and everyone's talking and super hyper excited and it you're not ready and you're uncomfortable um and you might need to not stay um having a plan for that would be good knowing ahead of time um because if you don't have that and that hits you once you're already there that's gonna be that's gonna be anxiety inducing and again the whole point of this is to make um make the transition back as, as easy as possible for you. So, especially if, uh, for instance, if you did not drive there yourself, if you, um, if somebody else gave you a ride or you took the bus or something of, of that sort, um, where it's not going to be a quick and easy way to, to depart, that's going to be something to keep in mind. Um, it might also be something as simple as, um, just taking a minute by yourself. Um, you know, your field, you know, the areas where it's going to be good for you just to to go off and take a minute um but just things you might want to consider just again um so you're not caught off guard in that moment uh now extroverts are going to have a very different experience um extroverts are going to be the ones that are just antsy to get there that just need to be there are just so uncomfortable with the isolation um the so for extroverts um, an experience you might have is wanting to go and hug your friends and not being able to, um, being closer than like three meters apart to have a conversation and it's weird and you just, 
it might be a little anxiety inducing. Um, it's a lot of a lot of emotions and a lot of energy, and um, it might catch you off guard. So again, just one of those things to think through. Um, I would say also uh, consider that you might want just time to talk with folks, um, to not just go into whatever the the activity is. Um, and this is something that I'll go over for officers because this would entail kind of um, more along the lines of what they'll be getting situated for, for schedules and whatnot. Um, but you as a player always have the choice not to just jump into an activity. You can, you know, uh, hold off on the first thing, go to the second thing. Um, but essentially, again, you want to do something that is going to make you feel comfortable, something that uh, will be a positive experience for you and something that um, you are looking to do. So things to just mull over and consider ahead of time. Um, also, one, one really weird thing um, that I didn't, I didn't put up here, but... Um, has come up i've found in multiple um conversations with folks that have been um really active on discord and in multiple kingdoms as well um and especially for those that uh visit with those on discord that are not in the same kingdom um going to field and not having those players be there um i've heard across the board and experienced it myself um it can be a little jarring to just when you when you talk with folks every day for a year and a half and all of a sudden um it's time to go to field and you're super pumped and you go there and none of the folks you've been talking to and bonding with and in your mind is you know your amp guard group none of them being there um can be jarring it can be like you're almost like you're, you know that they're not going to be there, that you know they're not part of your park, um, or in some cases, even part of your kingdom. Um, but for some reason, you kind of look for them. You kind of have that epiphany of, oh, they won't be here. And then realizing who will be there, who you haven't talked to in a year and a half, and that experience of catching up and... Um, getting back to what was normal and what was your group. Um, that's, that's the thing that you might want to consider. <laughs> um, just go in with that in your head uh, first, uh, because uh, I've had, I've talked with some folks that were like blindsided when they got there and like didn't realize it would hit them that hard. Um, so if, again, this is going to be a big thing with extroverts, um, yeah, it's, it can be very weird. Now, it can also be a thing with introverts if they have their safety net of specific individuals and then those safety net individuals aren't there, um, that can cause some uncomfortable feeling going, oh, I have to reconnect with now what feels like almost strangers because it's been so long. Um, that can be a thing too. Uh, okay, we've gotten to the portion of the class where it's a reminder to hydrate. Self-care is super important on the last thing of our thing. Um, definitely not the least important thing. Hydrate, please. Okay. Um, process emotions. So we've basically been going over um, mostly this already, but again, um, you... You might be surprised at the emotions that you feel when you get there or the emotions that you have when you're about to go. Um, and also the emotions after your first experience. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> sorry, just saw the note about uh, hydrating. Yay. <laughs> um, so some things that uh, might surprise you. Um, Change can be a positive thing for some and a negative thing for others. Um, the thought of contemplating 
how much time has been lost, um, how much time we have been secluded, um, those emotions can hit you pretty hard. Um, the feeling when you see everybody again for the first time and also not be able to hug them, <laughs> um, that will hit you. <laughs> Um, in a very specific way. Um, even just depending on how the first day went, whether it was um, a good, happy, reunion, exciting, fun day, or was it all over the place? Did you feel unsafe? Was it super chaotic? Were you uncomfortable? Was it so different from what you've been experiencing the past, um, you know, year and a half? Or, um, they're just things that you might want to just process. Um, how best to say it? It's okay to cry. <laughs> um, um, sometimes it's just a real good release of, of feelings and bent up emotions um because there there isn't just sad crying there's happy crying too um i'm gonna be super honest with you and for those that know me i'm a crier um i'm very uh easily moved by emotion um i i had myself a good happy cry um and i needed it and it felt good um but it was it was just so many emotions all uh coming together at once um and i had to take the time to process it um so just allow yourself the time to do so and consider that you might want to go through that before you go to field um or you might want to go through that after field um but for mental health sake it's good to kind of go through and just go through those processes and um, explore and consider how things have impacted you. Um, and if possible, if you have somebody, um, again, somebody that is uh, a safety net for you, somebody that you can confide in, um, being able to also vent um, is also a good thing. Um, it's important when you do have a, um, a, a deep emotional thing to not let it fester inside. Um, it's good to be able to, to sort of get that, that out. Um, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Um, expectations. It is good to understand the expectations that, um, that will be involved with going to field again. Um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, if you are very into the combat aspect of this game and your bid says that, uh, you will not be doing combat when you start, going to field and having the expectation that everything will be normal and regular again would be not a realistic expectation. You will go and be very disappointed. Uh, you may regret going. Um, it's good to be realistic about uh, how field will be structured, what will be offered, what you will be able to do. Uh, it's be very, very conscientious of your bid. Make sure you read it very carefully, understand exactly um, what that first day is going to be and what might be a period of time of what that field will be um again dependent on your bid and what is approved by the board of directors um on the second end of that um understand also that we will inevitably get to a point to where we will be able to do regular field as we remember it um even if it's months before we get there it will inevitably get back there will be a point where we won't have to wear masks that we won't have to social distance that we won't have to sanitize all the time 
there will inevitably be a point where the world returns to what it was. It might take some time, but having expect that we will get there because if you also just hyper focus into what we have in our current bids and what field is right now you can get really down um so it's important to also be able to look ahead um and the expectation that inevitably at some point in time we will get back to what is what we once considered normal um so again process understand expectations and go through that self-care oh my goodness gracious self-care is so important um make sure that um i'm gonna go into this in the physical ones so i'm gonna backtrack Oop, a little okay um I'm going to say the emotional self-care of this is going to be, um, do the things above. Whoop. Um, make sure that you are, you are in a good spot mentally prepared before you go out into your first day. Um, make sure that you are in a good situation after your first day. Um, Make sure that any of the unpleasants that can happen on your first experience, um, that you are able to process all of that um, to, to deal with it in whatever way uh, you need to, so that you are prepared for the second time you go out. Um, for a lot of folks, and I'm sure um, just reading the title of this, uh, a lot of folks are already have had their experience of uh, their first day. Um, but preparing to return isn't a one-time experience. It isn't just, okay, how am I prepped to go to one day and then everything will be completely solid the rest of the time. It can take longer for some folks to adjust than others. So for some folks, it'll be like riding a bicycle and after the first day, they're like, yep, nope, I'm in the groove. I got this. This feels completely normal now. I'm good. Um, for other folks, it will be a lot harder for them to process the change, um, process how um, how they have to define amp guard for, for a time, um, how to deal with the the feelings of um, the interactions that they'll have, dealing with um, what they can and cannot do in regards of what they love most about the game, especially if that thing isn't able to be done yet. Um, not having safety nets there, if they have, you know, um, a different group of safety nets. Uh, there's, there's lots of things that can be uh, longer lasting and this is the thing that we should also be aware of for ourselves if that applies to us um so that we know that we can be gentle with ourselves that we can um we can go at our own pace and we can be understanding of our limitations um and our wants and needs um and again, having that time to process your emotions, whether they are positive or negative, um, it is good to process them. Um, so just be aware that it may not be a one and done thing. Cool. Okay. I'm going to now go into the physical stuff. Again, if anyone has any questions at any point, please let me know. I want to quickly just look over stuff to see if I've missed anything. Yes. <clears throat> um, one thing uh, Whipsy has mentioned is uh, a common issue they've noticed with in-person interactions. Um, is excited people getting overexcited and uh about seeing people and moving closer and closer therefore disregarding distances 
Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a thing. Um, if you are the super excited person, uh, self-restraint is super important. Um, if you are a person that is on the receiving end of a very excited person getting closer and closer to you, um, remember that you can also move. Um, also remember, uh, boundaries. Um, be sure to let them know. Get a little close. Okay, thank you. Um, got, you, you gotta speak up for yourself. Um, you, if you are in an uncomfortable position, right, again, it, it might also be if you're uncomfortable with that, go to your safety officer to go, hey, some folks are not following the distance thing. Can you please make sure folks are keeping the distance thing, right? Them as safety officers, that's their job. Their job is to make sure that people are staying distanced. Um, and for some folks, it might just be a reminder because Again, this isn't normal human interaction. <laughs> we don't normally um, have to keep this, like, distance at all times um, thing. So we can sometimes, right, uh, forget the distance that we must stay away from another human being. Um, so sometimes you just need somebody to just remind you, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'll go into that for the officer stuff, but it's, some people are going to just have, have just a moment where they just go, oh, right, I'm so sorry. Um, overzealous, I'd say. Um, definitely not malicious intent by any means, um, but it is definitely a weird thing to get used to is distance. Okay, so how going into the physical aspects? Um. Make sure that you stretch. Goodness gracious. Uh, folks should have been doing this years and years and years and years before this point, but goodness gracious, is it so very important right now? Um, stretching is going to prevent injury. Uh, do you know what, what really, really, really sucks? Um, going this long without being able to play and then on your first day pulling or tearing or breaking something uh, and then your return is another three to six months away, um, if you're lucky. <laughs> so don't risk that. Don't risk that being prolonged. Um, make, make good choices. Stretching is super important. Um, nope, I'm going to that into the officer stuff. Okay. Uh, hydration. Goodness gracious. What's that? Another reminder to, to keep hydrated. Keep hydrated. Let's all just hydrate. Okay. Um, if you are drinking when you are thirsty, it is already too late. Um, you should be drinking before field, during field, and after field. Um, a lot of folks will, will not do that and they will end up, uh, getting dehydrated. Um, some folks will end up passing out, um, heat stroke, things like that. Um, all sorts of things to avoid. Uh, some folks will also just drink like uh like sports drinks like powerade gatorade um and not drink water at all um that's also super bad um you want to have water in there somewhere so again you're going to drink before field during field and after field um take into consideration that we're all going to be wearing masks so when you do need to take a drink make sure that you you walk away from the group before you have to lift your mask a bit and uh take a sip um i will say pro tip uh if you have like a, a bottle like this or um or use one of those types of water bottles that have like a, a straw in it um you can have a straw that's in there that's bent if you can get those um, this makes it so much easier to be able to, um, get that in underneath your mask. Um, because trying to do this when you have your mask up and can't see, um, it becomes a risk of you just spilling your drink all over yourself. Um, I can tell you from personal experience, it's a thing. <laughs> Did I 100% do that on the first time I attempted to, to drink something at field? I sure did. <laughs> Luckily, I was 
way away from people and I have my back to them uh, so they did not see my terrible shame. But I'm admitting it here. I totally did pour my drink on myself because <laughs> I couldn't see what I was doing and just lost distance. But I was like, wow, wow, if I had a straw in here, that would have been really great. And I didn't. So random pro tip. Um, yeah. When you drink, make sure to sanitize your hands afterwards. Yep. <laughs> just, if you wonder, hey, I wonder when I should be sanitizing, you should probably be sanitizing. Just, just make it a thing. Um, but yeah, especially, you take a drink, you go like that, cool, you've now contaminated your hand. Oh, you pick up a thing, pick up somebody's weapon by accident, and go, oh, I'm so sorry. And then they forget to sanitize that. You've now just spread that to your buddy. There's lots of also things that folks don't realize that they do, too. Um, I will say just as, as a, a standard thing, um, adjusting your mask, um, rubbing your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Just don't touch your face in general is a good tip. Um... Also, if you are wearing a mask, um, I guess I'm kind of going over PPE at this point. Um, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do this right. I'm going to wait till we're in the PPE section. And I'm going to go over PPE. Okay. Um, okay. Cardio and atrophy. These are going to be things that we're going to have to take into consideration. Now, there are some folks that have been really smart and they have been doing exercise the whole time. And, um, congratulations, you did good. Um, for the rest of us, um, a lot of folks have not had access, um, to space to exercise or, um, access to facilities in which they used to exercise or amped guard of which they used to exercise. Um, the big thing with this is, um, the first time you run, you're going to get gassed pretty quick. Um, if you are asthmatic like me, oh boy, is that a fun experience. Sarcasm. <laughs> um, you're going to have to get used to high energy stuff. You're going to have to get used to movement. You're going to have to get used to running around. Um, your heart needs to readjust. Your lungs need to readjust. Um, be gentle with yourself. I should have had self-care on here too. Um, be gentle with yourself. Um, be realistic about uh, your limitations. Listen to your body because your body will tell you when you need to slow down or stop. Um, this is going to be a, a very important time of us uh, learning to listen to our bodies. Um, but also, and this also goes into mental health a bit, um, understand that it's not just you everyone else around you is going through the same thing so even though you might be having a hard time keeping up you're having a hard time running around you're getting gassed really easy everyone else is too so this is a time where we're all getting back into good health habits good shape um and we're doing it together and we're moving forward together so the bar isn't super crazy for, you know, everyone else except for you. You're all moving at the same pace. So be gentle with yourself there. Don't go in with that super anxiety going, oh, I'm ashamed of, of the weight that I gained. I'm ashamed of not being able to, to keep up with people anymore. All of that sort of stuff. Be gentle with yourself and know that you're not alone. We're all dealing with it in some regard. So be gentle and it's okay. We're going to get through this and we're going to move on and we're going to get ourselves back into good, healthy routines. Okay. Um, atrophy. Again, for those who have not been able to keep up with exercise during this time, um, you're going to suffer from muscle loss. So things are going to feel heavier. Things are going to um, tire your legs out a lot quicker, your arms out a lot quicker. Um, it might be harder to pull your bow. It might be harder to, um, to swing your, your sword. 
um, quickly or keep your shield up. Um, it might feel like it might be little things. It might be just ever so slightly off or it might be a drastic feeling. Um, again, this is one of those things where um, we, you can regain your muscle. Um, and being able to play again is going to significantly help with that particular aspect. Um, for a lot of people, this this was um, this was how uh, cardio, muscle building, all of that, um, in some respect, was a part of how we played Amp Guard. Um, so the absence of it can very much affect our physical health. Um, also, just uh, rust. Just regular, just getting rusty with stuff. Um, maybe just your shots. Your shots aren't clean. Um, your your blocks aren't clean. Um, you're having a hard time keeping your shield up on those on those blocks. Um, just just little things. Little things. Your accuracy's off. Something that's just again, that's stuff that um, muscle memory will be able to. Um, you'll get back into those good habits and that will come back. Um, so again, being understanding of your situation, being gentle with yourself and understanding that this is not a thing where you show up to your first field and everything is normal the back way that it was. It's going to take some time to adjust and especially if uh, your field regulations are um, not at the same point of being able to play with the same intensity and types that you were able to previously. Again, with uh, us progressing through phases, that's gonna that's gonna be changing. Um, but things to keep in mind. Um, okay, garb. Two major things with garb. Um, three major things with garb. Um, make sure you know where it is. Uh, might seem like a really simple thing, but uh, the night before field or literally the day of field and you go, okay, I'm, yeah, time for field. You can just garb up. Oh my God, where's my garb? I haven't touched my garb in a year and a half. I don't know where I put it. I put it away somewhere because I was like, I'm not going to use it for what? And you have no idea where you've stored it away. Or it's under boxes of boxes of things. Or, oh, you left it at your buddy's place. You, your parents' place, you, your significant other's place. Who knows what the case might be, but you might not have your garb there. Um, if you know your field is going to open, find your garb. <laughs> find your garb. Uh, thing number two, once you have found your garb, clean your garb. <laughs> Watch your garb. Um, <laughs> goodness knows how long it's been um, since you've worn it. If you've cleaned it since you last worn it, you should be. Uh, but some people, uh, let's be honest, <laughs> seen some, seen we've seen some stuff in our in our in our time. We we know some things. Some folks should be cleaning those a little bit more often. Um, make sure that that that's done. Um, make sure that if you have stuff that uh, is not dryer friendly, that you have enough time before field for it to dry out, right? If you have like a drying rack or, you know, 50 million hangers hanging up in your bathroom tub, uh, whatever your situation might be, um, understand that if you wash it the night before, it might not be dry for your field day the very next day. So again, as soon as you know your field is going to be reopening, find your garb, clean it. Um, the uncomfortable third thing. Again, as we've gone over the physical changes you might have experienced, your garb may not fit you. As uncomfortable as that might be, um, it's something that you have to consider. It might not fit you. Um, so a couple of things. You might need to augment your garb slightly um, so that you can wear it. Um, you might need to make new garb. Um, you might need to borrow your significant other's garb. Um, right? You're not going to be able to go, hey, can you bring me some garb at field? 
because we can't share stuff right now. Um, but if you happen to be in a household and your partner or family member also has garb and they have something that is more universally fitting, like a tabard, um, you can wear that. Um, again, wash it, but there, there are definitely things to consider. Um, it is, it's definitely something I've noticed that folks will end up, um, they, they won't think that that's a thing. And, uh, it can be pretty, pretty emotional when they put on their garb for the first time and, and they can't. And then the panic sets in of, I am going to have nothing to wear. Um, so it's, again, as soon as you know your field's going to open, dig out that garb, know the situation you're in and, and what you need to do to adapt to the situation to be able to, um, to be able to still wear a garb at field. Um, or if you might have to get a little creative with some mundane things that you have, um, tweaking things here and there, um, to be able to wear something that will uh, constitute garb. Because um, there's a whole bunch of different options like that. So um, for for those in the Nine Blades, I would highly suggest going to our Garbers Guild. Um, ask for suggestions there. If, uh, if you don't particularly um, tend to make garb yourself um, or would like some tips, advice, something like that, um, that's a good resource to, to go to. Um, there's 50 million different uh, amp guard crafting things, so those are always options as well. Um, as well as just any amp guarder you know that is a garber, they'll most likely be able to, to help you out. Um, at the very least, be able to give you some, some suggestions or some things to consider. And uh, yeah. That's another good point. Um, Worst comes to worst, will anyone really blame you first couple of game days after pandemic if you show up without, um, right? You might just not be able to wear garb when you first start out. Um, hey folks on your field, be considerate of, of everyone's situation. Uh, don't give them a hard time over this. Um, understand that it is a devastating thing for a person to to go through that um don't shame them don't be that person please <laughs> um but yeah um whoop. sorry i just lost my thing here we go um but yeah things to consider and prep for um the other thing is gar uh gear <clears throat> you might find the same situation with armor may not fit. That's the thing. Um, also, how you put on your armor, if you need assistance with somebody getting you into your armor and you don't have somebody from your household, um, that is a hands-on activity that you must be very close to do and requires somebody else to, to be touching you and your stuff. And that's not likely going to be allowed. Um, so consider that. You might not be able to wear that particular armor set. Um, you might want to go with a different set if you have one, or you might not be able to wear armor um, right off the bat. Um, but again, it's a good thing to know before you get to field and go, okay, yes, first day of field. Oh my gosh, my field's allowed to do combat. I'm so pumped. Okay, time to get my armor on. Crap. Can't get my... I don't know what to do. Panic sets in. Um, worry, doubt, and go, oh my god, now I have to do this. I wasn't mentally ready for this. Um, and all of a sudden your first day experience is bad. <laughs> Not a good thing. Um, I will say, that there are some, uh, there are some tips and tricks in the trade, um, to be able to, um, put on armor that you usually get help with, but you can do yourself. 
Um, so for instance, uh, something like bracers, if they're like lace-up bracers, um, two things. Uh, you can pre-lace them and have like a, a long lace so that uh, you can slide in pre-laced and then pull it. Um, some people have the dexterity to be able to tie that knot themselves, uh, maybe even use your teeth. Um, bless you if you can. Um, if not, there's... Um, if you've ever had like a hoodie that has like that thing where you pinch and pull it, and I don't know why I'm doing this with my hair, um, you, you pinch it and you pull it and it goes taut, um, you can use those for armor. Um, that's a cute little hack that I learned. Um, you can also use, um, instead of ribbon, you can use elastic um, for getting on bracers too. So if you lace it with elastic and have one of those uh, pull things, you can get it on, pull it, um, and use the, the thing to use it as a stopper. So you can get on bracers like that. Um, but yeah, there's lots of just random tips and tricks like that. Um, if you have any like back lacing, um, most lacing things, that's a good hack. Um, it gets a little bit more tricky when you're dealing with like um, plate armor where you've got, you know, leather straps and pre-existing things. Um, so you might have to get a little creative there um, or you might not be able to wear it. So things to consider. <clears throat> Okay, um, other stuff having to do with gear that you're going to want to um, make sure that you're prepared for. <clears throat> you might have stored your, your weapons in a location where other things got put on top and you have crushed your foam. Um, or dug into it, whatever the case might be, is no longer legal. Um, the instant you know that your park is going to be fielding again, not only find your your garb and your armor, find your weapons. Um, check them, test them, go through your your you know your standard checks and make sure that they are legal. Um, if they're not, hopefully you'll have enough time to be able to make some new stuff or repair what you got. Um, Again, this isn't a thing that you want to do um, five minutes before field time, you know, before you leave them for field and go, okay, I'm going to go grab my stuff. Oh, none of my stuff is going to pass a check. Oh, what's that? According to our bid, we can't share gear. Okay, so I literally can't play. Waited a year and a half to play and can't play because I didn't look at this a week earlier <laughs> when I could have. Um, don't let that happen to you. <laughs> Um, make sure that you, you, you're taking the time to check all your stuff. These, these are things that, you know, seem pretty basic, but, uh, when you're just, you're so used to things just being uh, the way that they are, um, or even just being in the places that they are, um, it might just slip your mind. It might not be something that you would even consider as a thing that could happen to your stuff. Um, because also, right, things like, I left it at my parents' place, or my significant other's place, or my best buddy's place, or whatever the case might be. Um, it might not be accessible to you. So, if you know ahead of time your park's gonna open, make sure that you know where your stuff is. Um, that's just kind of Anything that you will wear or bring with you or use, you want to do all of that as soon as possible. Okay, PPE. Um, masks. Let's talk about masks. Um, make sure you have the proper mask. The mask that is uh, regulation for your, your local um, health unit or even your country. In that case, um, there's like, there are specific types of masks that don't constitute masks and you really should know which ones those are. Um, just honestly as a daily life uh, thing, just to be safe, um, but also so that you're not going to get turned away at field or not have a thing um, or endanger others or yourself, because those are all things. Um, for those that are have 
the right masks, awesome. Um, how you wear them is important. Um, if you have any type of medical mask or um, N95, something like that, um, there is a specific way to wear them. Um, you will notice that there is like a metal bar thing at the top. Um, you are supposed to pinch that to your nose. Um, this is one of the most common um, wearing errors I see with folks where they will wear the mask, but they will not pinch the nose. If you do not pinch the nose, you do not have a seal. Um, if you do not have a seal, just kind of defeating the whole purpose of the thing. Because um, it's just completely open there. Um, you, the biggest thing is when dealing with masks, you want to make sure that there is a good seal. Um, that's why there's a suggestion for like, uh, if you're wearing those, like, blue medical masks to have a secondary mask that's more taut to press it down. Um, that's a big thing that folks have been, uh, discussing, uh, because it's got two giant unsealed, uh, ends on that. Um, so consider that. Um, right, again, there may be no regulation, um, saying that you have to do so, um, but it's a good thing to know about. Um, for those that have, um, that have masks and have issues with, uh, it getting, like, um, when you inhale, it's, like, either, like, goes inside of your mouth or presses so close that you feel like you're, um, like a claustrophobic, like, breathing weirdness thing, um, there's all sorts of cool tech that's out there now um that can help with that um something that i use is this uh silicone thing that goes over uh your mouth um that has big old holes in it so it doesn't impact the um the breathing portion of it um and it's really comfortable and flexible uh because it's silicone um but you just put that in there and then you put your mask on um which holds it in place but it um it prevents the mask from coming in at you when you're breathing um which is really really nice um highly just i swear by those things i love them so much um so things to consider um i've i found them on like amazon or something like that um there's also things to consider for uh, your ears, because for those that wear masks for long periods of time, right, especially if you're going to field, you might be there several hours, um, masks can kind of pull on your ears, make those sore and stuff. Um, there are things that you can do to um, to alleviate that. Um, again, this is, this is something that actually came with my silicone uh, mask thing, um, but it's like a silicone thing where it's got like three... Um, almost like button type of things, but the whole thing is silicone. Um, so you put it up top um, behind your head and then you get your, your ear straps and you put it onto those. So it doesn't actually go onto your ear at all. It goes like up here. Um, it also helps to make a closer seal on your face. Um, so if you have a loose thing and you wear one of those, it will uh, close off that point there which will help with the fit of your mask too. So double bonus. Um, but there are things that you can make to also do that. Um, you can have a, um, like a hairband, like a headband with buttons on it, right? You sew a couple buttons and you can just flip those right on there. Um, you can make your own little spacer thing like that, where you have just a strip of fabric, two buttons, right? Hold that up there and you put the elastic right on there boom it's not hanging on yours anymore really good stuff um also side random things okay if you are wearing a mask and it is below your nose you're not wearing a mask okay just if you are wearing your mask and it is on your chin or lower you're not wearing a mask um if your mask keeps on falling and you keep on just playing with it the whole time you're not wearing a mask um making sure that it is has a proper seal that it is staying covering your nose and your mouth 
is very important. Um, if you are constantly touching your mask, going underneath, doing something, your hands are contaminated. You need to sanitize your hands. Um, if you are concerned about the seal and inhaled stuff, um, removing your mask is a problem. So you don't want to be constantly playing around with it. Um, try to find a good position for it and then leave it be as much as humanly possible. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go into the other PPE stuff having to do with officers and what they're gonna need to bring. Um, but bring your own mask. Um, if you can, right, having a little personalized thing of hand sanitizer um, can be super helpful. Um, I've even so seen some folks wear medical gloves. Um, if you are wearing medical gloves, still use the hand sanitizer. Still sanitize. Um, because your hands might be protected, but the gloves are now contaminated. So if you touch something, you are now making it contaminated for somebody else or getting stuff from other people. So you're still going to actually um, sanitize, even if you're wearing gloves. So just a side tip. Um, doop, doop, doop. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for the physical stuff. Whew, sorry, that was quite a tangent. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Okay. Um, now we're gonna get into the officer stuff. So, um, if you are an officer of a local park, gonna be a hard time. You're amazing. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you for, for your service. Okay. Things that are going to be important for you to know. Um, you cannot just open your park. Um, not on the nine blades. Um, you require a bid to give to the board of directors. You cannot play until the board of directors approves said bid. Um, how you operate field must be the same as your bid. If you want to do something different, you must present a different or augmented bid to the board of directors. You cannot implement those changes until the board of directors votes and approves it. So super, super important. Um, there is a whole bunch of stuff that they need on there. Um, like so much that I, I don't want to try to parrot it. Um, so please check with the board of directors. Um, please check out their post on the Kingdom of the Nine Blades. Again, it can be found in the announcement section of the Nine Blades disc or blah, 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 Nine Blades Facebook group. Um, it says everything that they need in that bid. Um, Understand also for your bid, um, if you do not feel it is safe to do combat yet, then have your bid be for non-combat activities. Um, it is still worth opening your field for non-combat activities. That's what my park did. We had a blast. Um, now we are moving to a point to where we are resubmitting because we have moved into um, later things and we're doing pretty good. Um, so who knows? Um, but we can't change anything until that bit is approved. Um, so it's very, very important that you know what you can do, but also um, know that it is based off of what you are comfortable doing and what you feel comfortable is safe for your park. So as an officer, you can make that determination. If you do not feel it is safe, um, if you do not feel it is even safe to do non-combat activities, you do not need to open your park. Um, please do not feel rushed to do anything if you are not comfortable. Um, so just assess your situation, assess what your city is going through, um, if your numbers are good, if, um, you know, folks are vaccinated. <laughs> um, consider a bunch of things. And, and do what you think is right, what you think you can handle, um, and go from there. And know that you can start off uh, with one thing and, again, submit different bids, go up in um, the activity activities that you are doing. Um, 
because it's not a one and done deal. It's not like, oh, nope, I put in a thing for non-combat. Now we'll never be able to do combat again. No, no, no. Just resubmit a bid. So, um, the rush. Okay. Um, safety regulations. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things. Um, you understand that we are wiping all of our waivers. Um, so make sure that your park re-waivers with the new waivers. Um, I think that's pretty much a thing that you're going to see um, in most kingdoms I'm finding that are opening currently. Um, a lot of them are doing clean sweeps of their waivers and then augmenting them and having them be re-signed. Um, so be sure that if you are an officer that you have that waiver that you are able to get them um, out to folks. Um, remember that if you you're going to be in a situation where they have to sign them, right? Um, so consider how you're going to do that safely. You might want to ask people to bring their own pens. You might want to have multiple pens. Um, you're going to want to sanitize them. Um, something that my, my surgeon's office does is it has two things of pens and one says uh sanitized and one says used and all of these ones are sanitized and all of these ones are not so somebody grabs one that is now sanitized does their thing and they pop it in the used don't use the used it's important um that can be a good thing to keep safety stuff dealing if they need to be physically signing those waivers um Right, again, having in mind all of the things that we must do with sanitized, uh, sanitization and being safe as humanly possible. Lots of things you might not think is a thing until you go, okay, here's this pen. Oh, I'm holding this pen. How are you supposed to... Oh, God. Right? Think about ahead of time. Pre-planning. Good stuff. Um, you are... If you're in the Hindblades, uh, you're gonna have to have a... Um, a safety safety checklist that you go over with your players um, for each field. Um, some things that uh, are are going to be on there are things like um, going over the COVID symptom list, see if they have any of uh, of the symptoms, if they are um, new or or um, or severe things like. Understand that some things that are on those lists, uh, your players that have chronic pain, chronic illness, they could end up having all of those and those be normal and not severe and not be COVID. So um, have that conversation with your players. Um, make sure that you know and can differentiate um, what is new or we're seeing symptoms um because like also understand there's lots of people that uh have fatigue for a bazillion things um so just having oh you you're fatigued a bunch oh you can't play it might be just be because they're a new mom that's that's a thing um it could be just they're anemic that's not contagious or worrying for 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 a field. Um, consider that. Uh, other than that, right, you're gonna have things like have you traveled outside of the country in the last fourteen days? Um, uh, have you had any of these symptoms in the four last fourteen days? Have you been in contact with anyone suspected of or confirmed cases of COVID nineteen in the last fourteen days? Have you had COVID in the last fourteen days or suspect you have had COVID in the last fourteen days? Things like that. Again, check out um what your city's uh health unit um does for those uh, particular questions um. Also check out bids of other parks that have already opened um, because a lot of those you can just, right, use that information, um, use those, um, you know, augment them to, to fit your park. Um, but a lot of those things are already accessible, already written up. Um, 
So I know I know writing these bids can be very daunting, um, especially for for really small parks. So um, be sure to know that there are bids that you can look at, and um, there are officers that you can talk to and get advice um, on being able to write those uh, those particular bids. Um, okay, sorry. So we just uh, read a question. Uh, my park plays on private property. When should the officers be talking to them about getting uh, reopened before or after the uh, BOD bid? Um, so that is part of the, the bid process. Um, it, it wouldn't matter if you are signed off um, by buy your bid and the BOD is, is good and all of a sudden you go to um, the individual that owns that private property and they're not okay with you fielding. Um, that's an issue, right? Um, so you're going to want to talk to them first, make sure that, um, that you're allowed to play there. Um, you want that to be a part of your bid. So, um, but that's just my suggestion. Um, I would say if you have concerns about that, um, go and talk with a board of directors um member like specifically go to them um and ask which thing they uh they prefer you do that's going to be your best bet right i can give you a suggestion of what i i think would be it but um i don't want you to take any of my uh my suggestions and it be wrong so i'm gonna say definitely go check in with them um because any one of them will be able to, to point you in the correct direction for your particular bid. Okay, I uh, hope the answer's that. Um, another reminder to uh, hydrate. Love reminders of hydrate. Okay. Um, that's safety regulations. Um, also, definitely a part of your... Um, your bid will be talking with your local health unit. Um, like I previously mentioned, right? Um, you're gonna need to know what your what your local health unit considers AmpGuard to be, what classification, and what the restrictions will be for that classification. Um, you're also gonna want to know um, the the COVID numbers in your area, um, and what phase your city's in. Um, and for um, how many players you can have in a given area um, and whether indoor is allowed yet or if it's just outdoor um, and things like that. Again, definitely check out the, um, the post from the board of directors on exactly what they're looking for. Um, and if you have any questions, please go to them and make sure that everything's on the up and up um, because that's going to save you time. That's going to save them time. And it's going to be overall good, proper communication. Okay. Um, doop, doop, doop. PPE. Okay. Um, you're going to want to make sure that folks are bringing their own masks, but you may also um, want to consider having um disposable masks as well in case somebody shows up and doesn't have one um so that is something to consider um you're going to want to have a uh, hand sanitizer be available to use um consider how it will be used um you might want hmm. there's different ways because like if you touch it to use it the bottles then contaminated <laughs> So, um, that's a tricky one. So uh, consider how you want to handle that. Um, I've actually seen some pretty cool things where, um, they have this makeshift thing with like PVC pipe where you like, you step on it and it, yeah, there's some really cool things out there. So, but things to consider, right? Um, it might be as simple as, um, having somebody that can do that but it has to be social distanced um or um having it be that it's used and then it um they have to use like a sanitized wipe to clean it down um things to consider uh 
you also are going to want to have uh, a type of sanitizer to uh, spray down weapons if you are doing combat. So you want a way to be able to sanitize weapons um, before, during, and after combat. Um, so you will also need to provide that. Um, doop, doop, doop. I think that's it. Um, you might also have to do um, temperature checks if if that's a part of your thing. Um, understand that you're not going to be able to use a under the tongue um, <laughs> thermometer or any other various location. Um, you're gonna want uh, one that you can do external temperature checks. Um, and the advice that I was given as a um, Hey, some random thing uh, that you good to know happened to a park thing. Um, check it ahead of time to make sure that it works. Um, external ones can be um, kind of finicky. Um, side note, Woonjo, if you can hear me right now, um, I have an admin thing for you to do. Please and thank you. Um, There's a bot in chat. <laughs> Shoo. Um. <laughs> so weird. Okay. Um, make sure that it's working, right? Um, if all of your things are like, oh, this isn't a human temperature, um, then it, it's not gonna. That temperature check isn't going to be useful to you. So, um, you wanna want wanna make sure that they work. Um, make sure that you also know how to operate it. Um. There's certain things where um, it has to be done in a certain location, a certain distance. There's uh, different buttons that you have to push um, before or after a certain thing. Like there's lots of uh, things depending on the brand that you get, the type that you get. Cause there's different ones. Um, make sure you know how to operate it and make sure that it is actually calculating correctly. Um, Another thing, um, as like a side note that folks have uh, realized, um, your there's other things that can raise your body temperature. Um, where like if you're running around or you're baking in the sun for a long period of time, um, and you check somebody's temperature, it might just be a little too high. Um, wait like five to ten minutes and then retest them because it might just be them overheating um and not that they actually have a fever or covid for that matter um so it's make sure that again right it's an equipment thing things are working um and that it's not just the sun being the sun um or the body just being heating up because science <laughs> um that's the majority of pp also, the side note of making sure that your players are actually wearing their masks properly. Um, them just having them around your chin. They're not actually wearing them. Actually enforce that. You are the safety officer. Do the safety thing. <laughs> Make sure that people are doing that. Hmm? Okay. I hope you are all hydrating along with me. If you're not. <laughs> okay. Uh, schedule. Um, if you are an officer, you should you should have a schedule in mind of what you're going to be doing that day. Um, if you are not going to run the activity or game or whatever um, is your uh, allowed activity for your vid, um, make sure that somebody's actually planning to do it. Um, the last thing you want to do is have everybody show up to field and not no one taking the lead and no one actually having anything planned or prepared and um it's just oh yeah we can just do whatever does anyone want to do a thing no okay i guess we'll just stand here awkwardly for the next two hours <laughs> not, not the greatest <laughs> um so make sure that you have an activity in mind um make sure that it's going to be able to last the amount of time that you want it to last. Um, just consider having having a game plan. Um, but yeah, and making sure folks know what that is. Okay. Um, uh, 
So the other things, um, retention and recruitment. Um, retention, make sure your players know that you're opening. Um, this has come up many times in many parks in many kingdoms, um, where your park will open, but your players don't know it. And then you show up to field and a fraction of your players are there, um, because they just didn't know and they would have been there otherwise. Um, or they think that, um, you're doing an activity that they're not interested in, but it's actually something else. Um, so it's good that, right, uh, communication is key to everything. Um, so be sure that you are reaching your player base, um, to make sure that, that they have the opportunity to come and you are retaining your, your players. Um, something to also consider, check in with other players that maybe were slowing down by the end, um, that weren't coming out regularly, or even folks that haven't played in years. Um, what I am finding with this particular time period is how much folks miss community, how much they miss getting out and doing something. Um, I think you're gonna ha be surprised with the amount of former players that might be interested in coming back. Um, so reach out to them. See if see if they're they're interested. Let them know that the park's opening again, and and welcome them. Um, so food for thought. Um, so recruitment. It's going to be very important to know whether or not the board of directors allows recruitment during this time um because if you are not allowed to have new players um with your bid then going out and actively doing recruitment when they're not allowed to play not it's not gonna go so well um now on the other hand it's good to start planning these things now um having a thing in place a game plan for when you are able to have new players um will save time of when you can start getting them um again like i said with you know um contacting the old players to see if uh if they're interested in coming back to the game um use use this particular time um in mind when you're going for recruitment because there's going to be a lot of people who have spent a lot of time in isolation want to be outdoors want to do something community-based um just need social interaction um our game provides so many things um this is a really good time to to be recruiting um so as soon as it's safe to do so and as soon as the um board of directors um okays um travel and um new players to come in um consider consider going recruitment drives um yeah I, i'd say definitely especially if your park isn't big on doing recruitment based things um this is the time to consider doing the thing this is a good time. Um, if you aren't doing it because you don't really know how to go about it, um, reach out. Reach out to um, to veteran officers. Reach out to um, the the Crown Guild. Reach out to your your Kingdom officers. Um, there's oh my, there's so many guilds now. Um, there's uh, the Rose Guild um the there's so many options there are so many options um even just making a post being like hey can we anyone have suggestions for recruitment drives throw them in the comments so we can all just start thinking and brainstorming ideas you can do that that's always a thing do the thing um but yeah if you don't know ask that's the best advice I can give you for basically anything. If you don't know about a thing, ask. Um, 
there's so many folks in this game that are super eager to help um, and are open and available to do so. So if you reach out, somebody somebody will uh, will tap in and, and give you that assistance. Um, good stuff. Okay. And that's it. Those are all the slides. Um, so at this point, um, I'm going to do a quick just check through chat. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know if there's um, any like really specific things. Um, this is the time. Um, I can help uh, with any questions you might have. And if I do not know the answers, I can at least most likely direct you to who can um, provide you with that information. Um, I will do the best that I can, at least. Um, please be advised that um, if you are sending a message on Twitch, there is a 20 second delay. Uh, so at this time, I will do the, the traditional 20 second silly dance. Um, as was implemented long ago, um, on behalf of Rajavia, I will traditionally end with the, the super traditional jazz hands. So I will start the traditional silly dance. This is how we waste 20 seconds on Twitch. Well, we will wait for questions. So please don't let these silly dances go in vain. Ask those questions, please. Do the thing. Uh, also, if you wanted to just instantly show up, I would suggest do the Discord. Um, I am on the Nine Blades scheduled events on Discord, so um, you can post any of your questions there, or again in our chat here. Um, and my my terrible secret, um, my twenty second dance is never twenty seconds. And would you have to? Okay, there you go, Rajavi. That's for you. Sorry, you're in a board director's meeting right now. <laughs> Um, also thank you board of directors. Um, y'all are putting in a lot of work and it's, it's a heck of a time. So please know that, um, you are so very much appreciated. Thank you for all the work that you do. Seriously. Hurts. <laughs> um, yeah, there's actually a meeting right now happening. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> What is the thing in your hat? A metal cone? Okay. <laughs> kind of. Um, so how I do um, my my hats. Um, preparing to return to Ampguard. Here's hat questions. <laughs> Perfect. Um, it's... I use floral pins. So that's what that metal cone is. Um, so there's a pin on the bottom of it. Um, it's basically like a metal cone, so you can um, glue feathers in um, like an array, like a basically you. It's like a floral floral arrangement for feathers. That's the easiest way to think of it, because um, the really cool thing is um, that makes the feathers removable. So um, if it rains, feathers get destroyed when they are wet. Um, like these types of ones, they get really gross and ratty. Um, some feathers are totally fine because they're on birds that are meant to get wet and that's fine. Um, but some of them no longer have like the specific things that protect them. Um, so they get a little, ugh, um, with time. Also for travel, um, usually I'll get this and lay it flat in like my back window. Um, so that it's not obstructing my view, um, but it's also not getting crushed under things. Um, because, like, the rest of my hat, right, is is wired. So I can um, adjust this and it's okay if it gets all, like, weird and stuff. I can just bend it back to where I want it. Um, so those aren't an issue for me for, for travel stuff. But the feathers um, can be a big issue for travel. Because um, if it's like this then they can break pretty easy um which i have done a whole bunch of times with uh previous um editions of my hats um snap a whole bunch just in travel so that's a thing um 
So, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tweak this a little. Uh, when you're preparing to return to field, uh, make sure that uh, your gear is able to survive the return and know how to do the thing. I don't know. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. Um, will parks be able to ask for vaccination status of the park individuals? Um, that I'm gonna defer to the board of directors. Um, I do not believe so. Um. But specifically, it's not part of um, what the bid requirements are at this point, as far as I'm aware. Um, I have not seen the new waiver yet, so I don't know if there is anything on there. But to my knowledge, um, from previous discussions, um, I do not believe that that is a requirement. Um, so it will not likely be on there. Um, So yeah, um, as far as I'm aware, uh, that is not part of um, the bid process or what the board of directors is requiring at this point. But again, double check with the board director meeting. Um, member, words are hard. Um, yeah, just be sure, check with them. Okay, um, sorry that it's, it is, Also, major thumbs up to all the folks that are fully vaccinated. Thank you for doing your part. And I am glad that you will be in a good, safe situation. Um, I am also fully vaccinated. Okay. Um, okay. Any last questions? Any other questions? Hat questions? <laughs> Just gonna scroll up real quick, see if I've missed anything. <laughs> Does hydration count if it's not water? Should be water. <laughs> um, Yes, if you have a re respirator and it's not on right, then you can't breathe. Yes. <laughs> I had an amazing friend that gave me a respirator. Um, and yeah, that's not, if you don't have that seal, it's not on there right. It's, it's no bueno. Really bad. <laughs> yeah, make sure stuff fits. Ah! I keep on trying to drink it normal, then realize that there's a straw, and then realize that it's bent, and then I can't drink it. It's making poor life choices. Okay, last call, last call. Any questions? Um, this is a reminder, if you are here, you've been here for like two hours now, so goodness gracious, you've earned that credit. Be sure to sign in. Um, please go to the Kingdom of the Nine Blades Discord. Um, we're chatting here in the Nine Blades schedule event, but you can actually uh, sign in on any of the text channels. So you don't have to do it on there, but more than welcome. And uh, we use the Amped Bot in, uh, in the Kingdom of the Nine Blades. Uh, so if you are from another kingdom that has a Discord and you are linked up through uh, the Amped Bot, then you can sign in with the same commands, same name, everything the same, and it will um, it'll work the same. Okay. Sorry, I have my cat has been everywhere and I have a hair in my mouth and it's bugging the heck out of me and it has been for the past hour. Okay. I will sanitize after. <laughs> um Okay, last last check. Coming to an end. Um, okay. I think we're doing... Okay, good stuff, good stuff. I think that's it. Um, 
So again, please remember to, to sign in because we will be shutting down the tracker shortly. Uh, if you have come to this class, um, thank you so much. <laughs> um, very much appreciate you being here. Um, okay, just want to make sure that my controls are different now that I'm using a different device. <laughs> I want to make sure I actually know how to stop this stream. I think I do. Um, so at this point, I just want to thank you all again uh, for those that have been here uh, live during this stream and for those that watch this in the future. Um, very much appreciate it. Very much appreciate uh, your support for um, for the Admiral's Academia. Um, and if there are any classes you're interested in me covering in the future, uh, please let me know. I'm very interested to uh, to do so. Um, other than that, this has been, uh, preparing to return to in-person Amp Guard. I've been Admiral Ann Cash. Um, be safe, take care of one another, and have yourself a fine evening. <laughs>